Hello wrestling fans and trading card collectors. Welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Cards. I'm your host Zan Warning. You can check out all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff down below near the comments. Before we get started on today's video, let's look at what we got on the table, per usual. 2017 Panini Optic, Pat Mahomes, PSA 9, Silver. Look at that shine. Not the greatest Pat Mahomes card, but I'm really happy to own that. Next up, Iconic, Dusty Rhodes. Again, what many consider his rookie card. If you can watch my video previous to this about rookie card collecting with wrestling and how it's kind of tricky, most people still consider that the Dusty Rhodes rookie card of the wrestling all-star set Iconic card must have. Lastly, Giannis. Giannis rookie, PSA 9. I don't need to say much more about that. What I do need to say... 1994 Wrestling. Let's look at WCW side real quick. They get Bobby Heenan, Macho Man, and Hulk Hogan all to jump ship to WCW in 1994. Finally, we get to see the Hulk Hogan-Rick Flair feud and match at the Bash at the Beach pay-per-view. What's WWE doing during all this? Well, hold on. We've got more to talk about. ECW officially launches after Shane Douglas throws down the NWA world title and claims that the ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling title to kick off ECW. Again, what's WWF doing? Well, they're just releasing, guys, and they're in the middle of the what's known as New Generation era. And today, we're going to be talking about a little bit... And today, we're going to be talking about cards from the New Generation. 1994 WWF action-packed trading cards. So just a little history on action-packed. They've produced cards from 1988 to 1997. They make cards of other sports. I didn't see them a lot growing up. I didn't actually start seeing a lot of these until I would find them in junk bins at local card shops or card shows in like the free section or the quarter section. I have one example and that's this Rick Berry action-packed basketball set. They only made one set of these. And the thing with these is they're like an embossed finish. I don't know that I can pick it up on the camera, but they stick out just a little bit. There's a little bit of a... I know most of you may know the Topps embossed series that came out in the 90s. Very similar to this. These have the rounded corners. It's a thicker card. They always have the printed autograph right here. I actually think it's kind of a cool design. As you can see back here, right up here, that doesn't that's not actually where. It's the way that the card is like folded over on top of this. You'll see this too when we start going over the WWF cards. But they made a lot of these cards very similar across all platforms, no matter what the sport was. So in the WWF set, there's 42 cards total. Six cards are subset, and six of those are considered inserts. They... They have six cards towards the end of the set that are just single wrestlers that have a gold background. But they also have those exact same cards as inserts, and they're 24 karat gold cards. And I can show you a little bit more about those later on in the video. They did have two promo cards available. You can find those for relatively cheap on ComC or eBay right now. They have an Undertaker and a Randy Savage. You just have to look on the back of the card. It'll say promotional on it or promo. And then the biggest two cards of the set, they have two serial numbered auto cards of Randy Savage, Macho Man, and Undertaker. Those are very sought after cards even today, but back in the mid-90s, there was really not a lot of serial number impact autograph cards going on, and I think this they kind of set the tone for that. I mean, they weren't the only one, clearly, but in the, the mid-90s, when wrestling wasn't doing that great... And this was one of the only major card release sets from a major wrestling federation that I knew of. That's kind of saying something about this set of cards, and I think they're still memorable. I actually really like it, but without further ado, let's get into the cards. Card number one. Bam Bam Bigelow. One of my favorites. Look at this guy, just intimidating, menacing, those head tattoos. I keep wanting to do that one day, I don't know if I ever will. And those classic forearm tattoos, like you just don't want to mess with this guy. So as you can see, we've got the gold border around there. And these things, you can see at the top, they get damaged really easily. So if you can find PSA 8, 9, 10, 
or BGS or SGC, whatever you're into. If you can find those at an 8 or higher, I'd say it's a pretty good buy, just based on the damage that gets done in the surface wear. But you can see how, look at that face standing out off the gleam of the light. On the back, here's where I was talking about, like, see this this corner's okay, it's rounded. And, and the top, you can kind of see there looks like, well, it's not really focusing, but there's a little separation because the card is kind of folded back on itself there. You can see that line in the white. That's actually the back of the card where two parts of the card folded over onto each other. But you get these cool sayings. Um, right here on the sides is where it would say promo or it would have a serial number stamp if you had one of the autographs. This is considered the Bam Bam Bigelow rookie card. He's got some other products available, I believe, in foreign Merlin stickers, 1991 and 1993. This is 1994 card. Even though he's been around forever, this is technically considered his official rookie card. So if you're a Bam Bam Bigelow fan, there you go. Go out and buy that. Next card in the set, IRS, Erwin R. Scheister. Clever gimmick, clever name, never a fan of the guy. I even did not like him when he was Mike Rotunda in the Varsity Club. Not saying he's a bad wrestler, just w wasn't a fan of the, I guess, rest. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say because I like the gimmick, and he. I guess he's a good heel. Maybe that's what it boils down to is we love to hate him because he's doing his job. But he just wasn't flashy or exciting or anything. But it's still a funny gimmick, especially as an adult looking back. Look at that boring IRS stamped autograph. How cool. But you can see standing up these off the card. The embossed finished. Cool sayings on the background. You can check that out if you decide to buy this card. But there you go. Card number two. Card number three. Huge fan of this. Doink the Clown. Who did not like Doink the Clown? Pro wrestling purists hate this kind of stuff. I love it. I grew up with this stuff. I understand pro wrestling as a sport way back in the day. I can watch a Harley Race Ric Flair match that lasts an hour with a time limit draw, and I'm just as entertained as I am this guy right here. It's just different styles of wrestling. But this guy w creeped me out because you never know if he was going to be smiling at the camera, scowling at the camera, what he was going to do to his opponents. Was there going to be five other doinks show up? You just never knew what was going to happen with this guy. So this is a fantastic card. He's in the middle of giving his finisher off the top rope the whoopee cushion, which, <laughs> that's fantastic. This is considered his rookie card as well. For most of you who don't know, this is Matt Bourne playing Doink in this era. There are tons of different versions of Doink. The original Doink is Matt Bourne. He has a card similar to this Dusty Rhodes card. It's purple, just like this. But Matt, he has a Matt Bourne card that's actually considered the rookie card of Matt Bourne. This is considered the rookie card or first character card of Doink the Clown. So this is fantastic. Once again... Interesting saying on the back. Tells a little bit about what's going on with their character or their storyline of that year. There you go, card three. Next two cards are major, major cards. 1994 rookie card of Diesel. To my knowledge, there are no previous cards of Diesel, but whether it's stickers or other promotions or anything like that. This is the only one that I know of. And many of you guys know him as Kevin Nash in the WCW NWO era or, you know, later on TNA. But this, look at that card, just menacing. Got that awesome signature on there. This is a card to own, I think. This card could be going forward a, I'm not going to say a great investment, but decent. Especially no more than you can pay for this set. I mean, this set is... Again, um, a fraction of the cost of these these cards back here, you could get the whole set. Minus the 24 karat gold inserts and autos, obviously. But yeah, check out this Diesel card. Coincidentally, right after him in the line, card number five, we had Razor Ramon, his tag team partner, The Outsiders, WCW and WL. I believe that's... It looks like Million Dollar Man he's got up for the Razor's Edge there, which was one of the coolest finishing moves at the time. I'm not sure if that's Ted DiBiase, actually. It looks like it, but anyway. He's got him up for the Razor's Edge. Awesome finishing move, and that's a fantastic pose. I really like the photography on these pictures, by the way. Even if you don't like the character or the card itself, 
the pictures are really done well. More about Razor Ramon on the back there. Coincidentally, we're going to end the video with these two being the last cards. Also, coincidentally, they left WWE two years after these cards were made and would turn the wrestling world upside down, almost putting, or I guess I should say helping to almost put WWF out of business before the attitude started. Because these guys jumped ship to join NWO and WCW was off to the races. Speaking of, do you have any memories of the NWO and these guys? Do you have any memories of these other cards? Do you have memories of Action Packed in general? Maybe it was another sport. Leave comments down below. Let me know what your opinions on these wrestlers are, what these cards are. I'll come back and do more parts of this series until I get the whole set complete. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out all my social media links below. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. It's all down there. Appreciate the support. Until next time, see you wrestling fans.